Hi, I'm Paweł Spychalski and welcome to the sixth video of the INAF3 from Flash to Flight series. Bear in mind, this is the, well, this is the last video before actual flight, because in the previous episode we covered almost everything that you had to set up in your INAF to have the successful first flight, and most probably not only the first flight, because we covered orientation, calibration, receiver modes, OSD ports, almost everything. Today, today it's time for, let's say, a final touches and the PID tuning. Um, the PID tuning will be done in a very, very, very short way without going into the details. And the final touches are the final touches I like to put on my INAV drones, my INAV quadcopters and more copters, uh, devices that I use all the time, almost on the everyday usage. So let's go to the configurator and let me show you what I'm talking about. Everything that you have to set up for the PID tuning and in general tuning of the INAV is located in the PID tuning tab. Bear in mind, this is only a quick overview of what's possible and which elements you might really take a look at this is definitely not the tuning uh, not the tuning video i also suggest that you do not change the values you do not understand and uh, to be honest the default values with which we provide you are most probably fine for the first flight you will be able to change those values like for example proportion proportional p term of the PID controllers only after you will be successfully flying your drone. So we will not be covering that at all. By default, INAV is tuned in the way that it will most probably work just fine for everything between 3 and 7 inches of the propeller side, uh, size. And some say that really the 7 inch tune is almost great and works fantastically. However, uh, if we go to the rates and X Expo, you might take a look at, for example, roll, pitch and your rate. By default, they are kind of slowish, really far from the racing on the freestyle uh, rotation rates on each of the axes. And uh, to have something uh, slightly faster, you might bump those values to 800 or even 900 degrees per second. And because INAF is using simple but still the correct working expo, you might want to also tune your expo. Bear in mind, default is like a default. And if you want to have, let's say, slower response in the middle of the stick and faster response on the uh, when the stick is fully deflected, you should kind of increase the expo value. On topics on the filters, uh, this is definitely not something for this video. In general, however, INA filters are by default great for five inch propellers. If you are having seven inch propellers, you might want to at one moment lower the main gyro, gyro filter cutoff frequency because just the seven inch propeller will be probably rotating slightly slower. However, this really depends on your build and how your drone is really built. My seven inches are flying somewhere between 95 and 105, but still it depends on how clean the signal is. I have a separate video on how to tune the unicorn filter, the filter that uses the Kalman in the INAV. Uh, uh, so the link to this video is probably in the description. You might just go there and uh, check it out. Uh, for now, it's enough for you should be fine with the defaults. If, however, you want slightly more response, slightly more aggressive flying style, you might end up by boosting the Q factor to 300. Tuning the deterrent filters, just leave it at defaults. If you do not have any extensive vibrations anywhere, just leave it at the defaults. Uh, this is good enough. If you, however, have some strange vibrations and uh, after checking with the uh, black box lock that the D-term is indeed going crazy. You might want to lower the D-term LPF cutoff frequency and uh, the other settings you definitely do not have to worry at, uh, about 
at all. And finally mechanics, which is um, rather tuned quite well for all the propeller sizes. If however you have 7 inch uh, drone, then I suggest maybe top debus at acceleration dropping this value to between 5 and 6,000. Somewhere around 6,000 6, should give a quite nice um, prop wash handling and quite nice uh, response and that basically is all if you really would like to have the uh, fastest ever PID tuning guide don't worry about the integral just leave it at default in the beginning don't worry about the d-term just leave it at default it will be scaled during the flight if however you have a quite nice and clean build you probably can boost the derivative from 23 to 28 and from 25 to 30 without worrying absolutely about anything and the, in the in the beginning phases of tuning what you really have to worry about is the proportional uh, if you feel that you do not have the full control over the drone just start raising the proportional with the steps of five uh, until you will either feel that everything is working like you expect or there is some kind of the vibration so then you have to back down from the proportional if however your quad is oscillating or your quad during the sharpest the sharp turns or maneuvers you feel that it's getting this in this shaky mode that means that probably your proportional gains are slightly too hard high rule of a thumb uh, those values are uh, probably too high for the three inch uh, drones probably you will have to lower um, proportional gains on the three inches on the five inches they can be fine they can be too high it really depends on the size and the power that your motors are del delivering and usually the proportional gains will be too low for the seven inch build but this really depends on how your quad behaves in the air and what are the symptoms and this is not for this video definitely and if we are talking about the final touches let's go to the advanced tuning tab which allows you to allows us to set up extra thing by default the speed of the return to home is well not the fastest ever and you actually might want to increase the return to home speed which is done by changing the max navigation speed in centimeters per second and max cruise speed in centimeters per second INAV should be capable of handling the speeds up to 10 meters per second. Um, values around 800 usually give pretty fast, pretty nice, pretty working uh, solution that will make your quadcopter go home with the speed between 25 and 30 kilometers per second. Uh, if you are not afraid of the final braking and uh, other things happening during the landing, then you might even boost those values to 1000, but I suggest not to do it in the first flight. Better to be, better to be safe at sorry and start with 7 150 centimeters per second on both of those fields and then bump them uh, on the consequence uh, flight. Also, you might want to increase the multi-rotor max banking angle to something like the 45 uh, degrees, but this has to be synchronized with the uh, max roll and pitch uh, roll angle on the rates and expo. So let's put 45 everywhere and of course let's save and go to the advanced tuning one more time and of course yeah so 750 and 750 you rather do not have to worry about the braking general navigation settings uh, or re return to home settings only do remember that by default INAV will try to go home at the height of 10 meters uh, so but if you are flying around trees and or other obstacles then you might want to build boost it to let's say 25 meters so centimeters meter just divide by the 100 and you should be fine and uh, climb before air to home, return to home yes definitely land after return to home yes definitely you do want your quadcopter to land uh, after you perform the return to home because if not it will just hang there 
for nobody long nobody knows how all and if you want to have the faster navigation uh, climb rate those are two settings that you might want to adjust when you really need them um, but this really depends on if the default climb and uh, dive rate is too much or not enough for you the final setting i would like to talk to you is in the cli only and this is the get this arm this is the nav disarm on landing by default inav will not disarm after landing however um it's working fine it's working great if you set nav disarm on landing equals on and then save then after successful return to home exactly like the name of the setting says inav will just just disarm the quad or the hexa or the octa whatever you are flying and this is really like a nice a nice feature that definitely improves the safety because you just it lands you pick it up you go somewhere you do not have to worry about disarming this thing manually at all and that concludes the main part of the INAF from flash to flight series in the last six video we really covered I think everything that is required to set up on INAF to have the very nice and successful build. So what you have to do right now is just to follow the tutorial and happy flying guys. Uh, in the future there might be additional uh, advanced videos in this uh, series like for example how to uh, set up and how to configure missions so your drone can do whatever you want and go through the uh, predefined uh, path and uh, I don't know make pictures of something or follow circle or elements like that but for now it's all and um, I wonder how long the total length of this series is more than one hour or somewhere around one hour probably slightly longer than one hour still thank you very much for watching and yeah please do watch the video and until the next one bye bye